all you flight simmers out there and air cargo haulers uh commander kingfish here and we are back in air hauler 2 and microsoft flight simulator so uh in today's episode we are going to be uh covering finances uh a new factory uh some new bases and uh, i've also purchased some new aircraft and so we've got quite a bit to cover and then we're also going to fly to el paso for a uh, uh to open up a new base down there and i'll uh, explain why that that is a uh why we want to go to el paso for a new base so let's uh, get started Let's start with the uh, company finances. We've been doing rather well. Uh, the last episode, I think if I remember correctly, we wanted to stay over $7 million and we were able to do that. We added a new base then and uh, I think we added some new aircraft. Well, this time uh, the goal or my goal this uh, last couple of weeks was to uh, by the end of today's episode to be staying over $9 million. Well, we're going to easily be able to do that because I've already bought the planes and they're already incorporated into the fleet. And the uh, base, the the one base I've already opened and it's up and running. Now, so today what we're going to spend money on is we're going to start a new factory uh, at that uh, new base in Pocatello. And then uh, we're going to fly to El Paso and open up a base and we are going to pay off our loan so with all of that we still should uh, shouldn't have any problem staying above nine million and so uh, let's uh, go ahead and get started uh, so that's our finances so we're looking pretty good there so the first thing we should probably do is while we're here let's go into loans and let's go ahead and uh, repay the capital which is two hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. So uh, let's see if we clear the loan. Uh, it's going to take uh, two hundred eighty thousand to uh, settle. So let's go ahead and make that payment. Uh, two hundred eighty to settle this loan. Yep. Repayment made successfully. The loan is settled. That loan is out of the way so if we come back over to our company finance page if you remember we took that loan out down here way back at the uh, end of january and so that was uh right around a million dollars and so now it's taken us uh about what uh two and a half months to pay that uh, loan off but it is paid off and out of the way and we're still over $10 million, so that's not bad. Uh, and so uh, so that's a big thing, uh, a big thing checked off is pay the loan off. And so now let's go to uh, our bases. And I opened up a new base in Pocatello, Idaho. Uh, it cost me 422000 or 420000 and it took about five days to open. But uh, as you'll see, the one of the main reasons is uh, if we go over to the available cargo jobs, we'll go over here, and this is where Pocatello is, right here. And so you can see that it is Right here, uh, this is where uh, uh, La Grande, Oregon, our one base is. So it's pretty well situated from all of the, all of my other bases, like uh, Flagstaff is down here. Uh, I might end up putting something in around here, uh, but uh, I will be putting something over in here as well. So that's kind of keeping that uh, spacing that I like on my bases. And the other important thing is, uh, this is where we're gonna open up a factory. So if we go to our factories, uh, we at uh, uh, 
Uh, well, hold on here. Let's go to uh, uh, overview and let's go to our search and let's go to KPIH Pocatello. I will use that. Now, if we look at their commodities list, uh, the normal run of commodities, but the important one is textiles. Now, $15 per pound on textiles. The cheapest place in the whole world is $14. So we are almost at the most cheapest place for textiles. Now, if we open up, let's open up the spreadsheet and we go to uh, our items list and we will see that uh, uh, to produce clothing, uh, a second tier item, uh, it takes one, one textile. So basically we're only paying $15 to, to produce clothing. And if we go down to designer clothing, that is three textiles. So it is $45 and I've already set it up over here in my uh, uh, tab for Pocatello, uh, clothing, textile, the recipe, so 15 and 45. So this is going to be, as the jobs come up for clothing and designer clothing, uh, unless they're really undercutting, which I've noticed in the uh, uh, missions that uh, some of them do, so you can't take all the missions. Matter of fact, there's a jewelry one out there uh, that, uh, I have had to just ignore. So let me minimize this. And if we go back to, uh, our factories now, so we want to open up a new factory. So if we open new, it's going to ask us the base and we want to go to, uh, Pocatello and let's call this, uh, uh, design, let's see, let's just call this clothing, clothing, slash designer, designer clothing. There we go. So that's going to be the name of this factory. Uh, we are going to start with clothing. And as you can see, it only takes a day to build and it's going to be 60,000. Uh, I will probably, uh, we're going to start with clothing so that uh, we can get that rolling, but I will come back in because if we go to designer clothing, we could do that one today as well. It's going to take a total of four days to do the designer clothing and it's 220,000. So I don't want to start with designer clothing at this point. So let's just uh, blank that out and let's go ahead and click OK to start our clothing factory. Construction is started. Nice. So it will be ready uh, by tomorrow about this same time. And so that was the, so we opened up our factory. That was one of the things I wanted to do today. So we've got that done. That's new factories. And so uh, uh, we're looking pretty good. So that was the new base. We've paid off the loan and we've opened up a new factory. Now, uh, I wanted to show you our mission rep. Uh, let's go over to our info. Uh, we've been steadily getting our mission rep growing, so it's all the way up to 91%, and our overall has moved up to 77%. So ultimately, once this hits 100, then we are going to be at 80%. Now, what that's important is further on down the line, uh, if we wanted to open up and take out a loan, uh, our interest on the loan is going to be much lower than it was when we did our first loan. Our first loan was, I think, was at 18%. Uh, but that's what got us started. That gave us the boost to get rolling. 
Uh, I'm not sure. So if we go into the company finances, we should be able to go to loans. Uh, let's uh, see what it says. Take out a new loan. Uh, if we go to... So now you can see we're not going to do this. We're not going to take this loan out. But see, now we're down to 14.6. So that's quite a bit of uh, percentage points to be able to take out a new loan. So that will help uh, in our future. At some point, if we want to go to a much larger aircraft, if we need to buy a, uh, a 737 or something like that, we may need to take out a loan. But let's cancel this. We don't want to do that today. All right, so that's the importance of the uh, rep that you're building. Uh, so let's see. So that was that. Now, one of the other things I wanted to show that I uh, discovered was being able to send commodities from base to base. So if we go into our overview map, and let's go back to KFLG Flagstaff. And we'll use that. So let's just buy 10 precious metals because I'll be able to use those. And so we're going to go ahead and buy 10. Now, I don't know if it's quantity, but if we buy 10... Uh, and we're getting a bit of a discount. So let's go ahead and buy those 10. So they are there at our base. Now, if we go to our base and we go to Flagstaff right here, and we go to our base commodities, there's an overland here. So if we go precious metals and we click on this overland and it gives us the option to ship our goods to whichever one of our bases we want to ship them to. So if I go down to, I want to ship it down to KSDM, Brownfield. And so we'll use selected. And so it's going to let us uh, deliver those 10 precious metals down there for no cost. Uh, so. If you have a base and you have something like that, and I'm not sure how this works on everything because I got another example I want to go over here, but we're going to go ahead and say, okay, so it's going to take uh, 421, so that's about uh, 24 hours. So that uh, those 10 items are going to show up down at Brown's Field down in San Diego uh, in a day. So let's click OK. And so that is in showing it in transit right there. Okay. Now, the other example I had that I was going to use, I was going to send some processed jewelry from San Diego up to Grants Pass. And because uh, I had a uh, commodities request for the jewelry factory uh up in oregon and so i thought okay that'll be easy i could send it up there and from base to base now that with the processed jewelry was going to cost me thirty-two thousand dollars, and so i didn't do it because it's much cheaper to load it onto a plane and then just fly it up uh, so you just want to pay attention but that option is there for you and so, uh, yeah, it uh, might make sense. All right, let's go to our factories now. I also got a order. Uh, so at my jewelry factory, you can see that uh, I have a new order uh, that uh, I am working on. Actually, if we go to our accepted missions, uh, it's to supply jewelry. Uh, we can look down here. They are going to pay $230 per pound, and it's up to a maximum of $232. So I've got the factory building that, and if we open up our spreadsheet again, and we go to our... Uh, oh, uh, let's get over here. Uh, 
And if we go to uh, showing the order, so here's the order. It was it's going to cost me thirty six thousand to make that. I'm getting paid two thirty eight. Uh, so the revenue, so the net revenue is going to be seventeen thousand dollars for that. So that's not too bad. And you can see that we are ever so slowly getting our jewelry factory paid for. So this is uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. This is our seventh order. Uh, and so we've been able to bring our cost down of our factory down to 104,000. Now I did have, uh, <clears throat> there is some cheaper precious metals out there, <clears throat> which isn't too far away. So that's at Phoenix. So that's at $61. So I was able to do one of these orders uh, at this price. Uh, it's just nice being able to buy your precious metals at your factory. So you don't have to worry about flying them in. But if there's an order out there, you might uh, uh, look around and see where you can buy your precious metals or whatever you're doing on your factory. <clears throat> Factories are a long-term proposition. You're not going to be able to... Uh, build those and start making money uh, right away. Uh, you're going to have to get the factory to pay for itself. <clears throat> well, hopefully that cleared the throat out a little bit. So that's the factories. That's where we're at. That's the overland transport base to base, something to, to keep in mind. <clears throat> so let's kind of cross that off. Now I did buy two new planes. So let's minimize this and let's go to our fleet. Uh, <clears throat> I bought another Beechcraft. Uh, actually it was this one here. Uh, and so I promoted all of my pilots up a plane. So Theo is getting the Beechcraft. And then of course the rest of them were all promoted up to different planes. And uh, <clears throat> this one uh, was at 65%. So again, I had to convert it over to cargo, uh, but I think all in all, uh, I saved, I'm trying to remember, I didn't write it down, but I saved about $400,000 uh, on buying it used, which is what I like to do. The other plane I bought was a 207 and let's see who got that uh i think that might have been amy that got the new 207 so uh she uh went up to that and again that one was at 52 percent. i had to convert it over it was set up for packs and not cargo but still uh i saved a uh, a ton of money on that as well so two new planes into the fleet which we wanted to do and so we're in pretty good uh, shape. Now, I was gonna show you the organizing, how I uh, do my operations in the morning. I get my cup of coffee, I sit down, and I first thing I open up is my company finance, just to kind of see where we're at. So any of the late flights that are coming in from the night before finishing up, uh, I do try to make sure that all my pilots are done by eight or 9 p.m and then they can rest overnight. Now that's not required. Again, if you wanted to, you could fly your AI pilots 24 hours a day hauling cargo. From my understanding, that's not the case with the packs. They've got to at least have an eight hour rest period. But I think just trying to keep it to a real life scenario, you're not gonna fly your pilots 24 hours a day. So I try to always have them uh, finish up uh, there. And then so by the time I'm ready to go in the morning, which is usually about eight or nine o'clock uh, at the latest they're getting close to a 12 hour overnight uh, rest so uh so anyway so i open up uh, my company finance then i open up my fleet so i can look to see if there was any repairs that have to be done to the uh, aircraft and then i'll kind of go through and look at uh, what the hours are uh, to their next check and then uh, depending on where that's at then I'll try to work that around so that they can so that I can go ahead and do the the, the checks 
the A check, I think it takes a couple of hours. I think that's the case with the B check. If the pilots do it, so they're going to be sitting there for a couple of hours. I think the C check is close to half a day. So I, I always try to make sure that uh, I am keeping an eye on that. Uh, and then, uh, uh, so that's what I go through on the aircraft. And then I open up the uh, operations. And then I look to see if there's any skill points to be added. And so I go ahead and add the skill points. And then I'll just start uh, by looking at uh, where they're at and then going to the available cargoes uh, and trying to make out uh, and try to plan the best possible uh, scenario for them uh, for the day. Uh, I'll at least go through and get a cargo run set up for them. Uh, if they're at a base, then I will uh, go ahead and accept the job and then I'll uh, load up their, their aircraft for them to save them a about a half hour in the morning, uh, being able to get started flying. And then I just assign stuff, let them load and unload the cargoes themselves. So I don't mess with that too much. So today we've uh, got a total income already assigned out of uh, 267,000. Although I did have two big ones on here that my beach crafts are hauling. And as you can see, uh, Alex has already got uh, a portion of the uh, artwork delivered and she's on her way back and so she'll get the rest of that and so she'll be done by this afternoon and so I'll be able to assign her some more work so we should end up by the end of the day uh, over 300,000 in revenue so that's going to pretty much pay for a lot of the stuff we're actually doing today uh, Theo is delivering perfumes he's only got 96 miles between bases or between the base and where he's delivering it and he had an $82,000 uh, cargo run so uh, he'll be able to make that in two trips so I'm okay with making a couple of trips on stuff like that all right uh, again we've already talked about the accepted mission we did that uh, we've talked about the factories but if I'm needing to do something with those I'll open that stuff up uh, we and we talked about the uh, rep and we looked at the overview map uh, so basically, that is, uh, so let's go ahead and get back to uh, operations. And so that was the, we talked about the new planes, uh, organizing the pilots. Oh, we got a new achievement. So let's go ahead and look at the new achievement. Um, we go over here, achievements. We got the many hands because I had to hire a couple of new pilots. Uh, we have now at least 10 pilots on our staff. Actually, we've got 11 pilots on the staff because we've got 12 planes into the fleet. So that's uh, another achievement. Uh, so I'm not sure the next achievement that we might get, uh, it's going to be a bit uh possibly will be when i get uh maybe a million dollars in my personal account uh but everything else is quite a bit of money to build up to well probably the next one might be with uh, 10 bases i think we're at uh, six or we'll be at six or seven now so uh but that's going to be a while all right so that is the close that uh, let's go back over here and we'll just bring up that map. All right, so that's the achievements that we've accomplished. So I guess the next thing is we're going to fly down to El Paso. Uh, since there are no ca uh, cargo jobs going directly to El Paso, I did do some research. And if we go to the overview map and we put in uh, search and the base that we are at which is <coughs> excuse me ksvc <coughs> which is grant county uh grant county silver city uh they have medicines at 163 and if you look at where we're going we are going down here to el paso 
that's a plus 44 from there. So we're going to buy 600, uh, which is what they have. So we're going to just go ahead and buy the max. Uh, we'll load that up onto the aircraft. So that's 97,000, but we're going to make a tidy bit of profit off of that. So let's go ahead and buy that. Uh, there we go. Commodities purchased. And then if we go over to our aircraft, we'll see that we have uh, 600 medicines on board. And so let's see. So now we needed to come here anyway. So we need to set this up. Uh, we need to fly this aircraft ourselves. And we are going to KELP. Now this is going to be interesting. It's El Paso. But Briggs Air Force Base is right there as well. So I'm hoping that uh, uh, Air Hauler is not going to get confused by when we land at El Paso and uh, think that we're at uh, Briggs Air Force Base. But we'll see how that goes when we get there. So let's use selected. Uh, we've got that on there. Uh, we need to put a couple of hundred pounds of fuel on board. Uh, just to make sure that we have enough. We don't want to run out again. Let's put 250. We're only going uh, basically uh, 130 nautical miles in our flight. So uh, I think that is pretty good there. So let's click OK for the fuel. And... It's showing the route as 103, but that's a direct again, as I've mentioned before, it doesn't uh, really make any difference on this over here because this flight plan doesn't translate over. So let's accept the route. And I will uh, see you over in the cockpit when I am ready to fly. Okay, I am here in the cockpit, and I think we are pretty much ready to fly. Uh, we're going to be taking off and then coming around and then uh, kind of heading for El Paso. Uh, let's just roll this out just a little bit. So it shouldn't be too much. It should be fairly uneventful flight. Uh, we've got a few waypoints in through here, but... Again, uh, you've seen me fly, so once we get flying and up into the air, uh, I'm just going to let you enjoy the flight, and I will uh, uh, catch back up with you once we're ready to land down there. So let's see. Uh, elevation. Uh, I think we can go ahead and the flaps are already set, so I'm going to rev up. And then... Uh, release the brake and let's uh, go ahead and start uh, rolling down the runway and let's see if we can get this bird up in the air here we're at a little higher elevations here I think this was approximately 5,000 foot elevation and I forgot to look to see what El Paso is but it should be a bit lower in elevation so uh, I know that we have a fairly long runway here, so we're in pretty good shape. And I think we are about ready where we can lift off. There we go. Let's raise our landing gear. And let's go ahead and turn our autopilot on. And we should be in pretty good shape here. Straightening out. Okay, we should be on course right here. And we should be making our first turn right here. And let's go ahead and raise that flap.
and we are climbing at 500 foot per minute so up to 8,000 foot so that should be pretty good all right well I'm gonna just do a few more things here in the cockpit just double check a couple of things and uh, pop outside the cab and let you enjoy the flight on down to El Paso
As you can see, we're, I've been back in the cab for a little bit here. Uh, that is our runway right there. You can see the lights right there. That is Biggs uh, Army Air Force Base, Fort Bliss. Uh, so uh, we want to make sure that we, when we're coming in, we wanted to make sure we were going to land on this uh, runway right here, which is, that should be runway... 22, if I remember correctly. Uh, we're on uh, 219, so we're coming almost straight into it. So it's time to start preparing. Uh, I think we need to put uh, a flap down. So we can start slowing down. Start backing off on the throttle a little bit. And we're going to put our second flap down here pretty quick. Oh, one of the reasons I chose this airport is uh, <clears throat> for the uh, chemicals. <clears throat> it gives me the ability to make plastics. And we'll look at that when we get down here. All right, let's put another flap down. And I think we're pretty close to wanting to take over. So let's go ahead and turn these off. Situate it here and take over. Now there's I think two or three different runways here at El Paso. So uh, we're coming in on the longest one. And we want to park down at the farthest end that's one of the reasons I'm coming in this way, just be as far away from Biggs, because sometimes air hauler gets a little confused if there's airports that are uh, kind of close to each other. But this is a much, uh, this is going to be a great airport for uh, building factories, because uh, I can build electronics here much cheaper than anywhere else that I've seen. So. All right, getting lined up here. And let's put our uh, landing gear down. And minimums. All right, looking pretty good. One 
And let's 50, go ahead. 40. Back 30, off on the throttle. 20. 10. There we go. And we are on the ground. And we're not going to break right away. We're gonna just going to cruise on down. Like I said, I want to be down at the far end of this of the airport so that uh, it doesn't get confused. All right. All right. Uh, pretty successful flight so far. Uh, I uh, actually, the landing was pretty good too. You know, we might have should have turned there, but we'll go on down to the next next one. We could start slowing down a little bit here. So the AI pilots don't have any problems flying in and out. Uh, it seems to understand when they are flying, but sometimes it gets confused when I'm flying into an airport. And so I've had to kind of uh, do overland a couple of times. So we are just gonna cruise right on up over here where the uh, gates are. And that should ensure that uh, we are at the uh, right airport or that it thinks that it, we're at the, the right airport anyway. All right, we're just going to cruise and yeah, we can just come to a stop anywhere in here. All right, so let's Let's just go ahead and stop right here. All right. Normally I like to try to pull into where the correct parking spots are. But again, we're awfully close to that other airport. Okay. Well, I will see you back over in air hauler and we'll uh, close this flight out. Okay, I am over here in air hauler, so let's click our cargo fuel loading and unloading. Uh, we've got the, the medicines, it's, right, it's going to tell us this, uh, but we're going to sell those medicines here. So let's click OK, and then let's finish flight monitoring. Yep, we know we still got, uh, um, but we still want to stop. So there we go, a greaser landing. It was a pretty good landing. Uh, I was pretty happy with that. All right, so we are closed out here. Let me do something real quick here. Uh, okay, so let's, first things first, we've got uh, to go to the overview and we want to go to uh, search. We want to sell our commodities. Uh, so we are at K E L P El Paso use. And there it is. It's showing that we've got the 600 on board. So let's go ahead and sell, sell that. You want to sell the max and, uh, sell. That was uh, 26,000 profit off of that little, just flying down here. So that's a, uh, a pretty good thing. All right, so now the other thing that we wanted to do today down here was open up another base. So let's go to bases. Let's open a base. 
it's going to give us a couple of opportunities here because I probably have a AI pilot sitting at uh, one of these other bases, but we want uh, KELP El Paso International. So let's select that. Uh, building a new base at KELP uh, here will cost 365,000 with a monthly rental of 56,000. So that's getting to be about normal for the larger bases that have commodities. So let's go ahead and build this base. And there we go, the base is started. And so if we go here, uh, we look at the base details, it will be build finish in 120 hours. So what is that? That is four, four or five days. So it'll take a while for that to get built and that's okay. So we do have that uh, in the process. All right, I'm trying to think of anything else we wanted to cover today. Uh, kind of go over my list. Uh, let's take a quick peek at our finances at the moment. So, yep, we dropped down below that 10 million mark, but that's okay. My goal today was to stay above uh, 9 million. And we've done that easily. And actually, if we look at what we've got accepted on cargo wise, 255,000 uh, plus uh, our big, uh, Big planes, the, but uh, what the hell? Uh, Beechcrafts, our two Beechcrafts, they're going to be able to get some more uh, flights in today, some more cargo runs. So uh, if we go back to our company finances, we should be pretty darn close back to 10 million by the end of the day. So uh, I think that's pretty darn good. So we've, uh, this uh, last cycle, we've opened up two new bases now. Uh, we've bought two new planes, uh, we've hired new pilots, and we've sold some commodities, and we've opened up another factory. So we're doing really well. Okay, well, I think that's going to wrap things up today. Uh, if uh, you, you like this video, please hit that thumbs up. It really helps the video out a lot, and please subscribe. That'll really help the channel. And ring that bell. It will let you know when I am uploading new videos, and I'm doing that on a real regular basis. Okay, all you uh, cargo haulers and uh, sim pilots out there, keep flying away. Keep those smooth landings coming. And with that, Commander Kingfish is out of here, and I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching, everyone.